Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you guys. This is Car Chronicles, Dr. Carmen Bryant. How are you guys doing? You ready? Let's do this. I know many of you have worked with narcissists at your workplaces, co-workers, bosses, you know, and some of the telltale signs is the fact that number one, they're trying to get really, really close to you at work, really close to you, or they're kind of distance from you. Um, and, and it's kind of confusing because of the fact that they're really, really nice and they're all in your face and very helpful and everything. But you just get this vibe. You get this like something is not right. Go with your shanana. Go with your with your uh, instinct. Go with your gut feeling. Something's not right. Be be uh, more. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Um, there are other signs as well. When you notice that you're working with this person on your team, whether they're a supervisor or they're a manager, you notice that um, they have a way of influencing and they also have a way of gaslighting. They gaslight a lot. If they can't get something that they want, a lot of times what they'll do is, is come back to the team, pay attention to those supervisors or those people that always have something to say about their supervisor or about the manager. You know, there's a way to have a professional conversation, but when they come and you notice that they're always trying to influence people to be on their side or they're always trying to influence people uh, to take their side, you know, and it's always something negative, you know, and they tell you they play devil's advocate. What is a devil advocate? A devil's advocate, but they're always playing devil's advocate. Really, what they're doing is they're gaslighting, and gaslighting makes you question your own reality. You say one thing, and then they always say, "Is that really? Do you really think?" It makes you second guess what you were thinking in the first place. Uh, but these are the type of people uh, they can't get their way. They come back and they talk to the team, or they talk to you guys, and they they manipulate the narrative. It's not about them anymore. It's about us as a whole. And this is what they're doing to us. And it's almost like they're, they're starting a movement. You know, it's almost like they're starting a rebellion within the agency. There are policies and you know, a narcissist does not like policies, does not like rules, does not like regulations. And they can be working with company policies, federal government. They can be dealing with private companies or whatever. And then, you know, private companies, whether they're agencies, federal government, agencies, whatever, they have policies, they have rules that they have to follow. And if they don't like those rules, they will attack the person that is enforcing the rules. Not the fact that the person enforcing the rules didn't make the rules, but they attack the person that is enforcing the rules because the rules don't apply to them. These are the type of people that will file complaints with all sorts of agencies. You know, the civil rights agencies, the, the whistleblowers act, the HR, the, you know, whoever, the equal employment opportunity, they are the ones that make a big stink out of anything. But remember now they've gaslighted and they have uh, um, manipulated the people around them to go along with their narrative so that when they file a complaint, they have all these flying monkeys you know, that they have created these flying monkeys that su support and sustain their narratives about whatever it is that they're complaining about. And really what it may be is that that supervisor or boss is enforcing policies and is not going to move on what the policy is. But they'll take the little things and create a narrative. They take a little a little ant hill and make it into a giant Mount Rainier, like over here in Washington. They'll make it into something that is not. And most people are afraid to confront them. Most people are afraid to confront them because they have seen their rage. They have seen the mass fall off of these individuals and they've seen their rage. So they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to speak against them. They're afraid to say anything. They're afraid to speak the truth because they're afraid of what is going to happen because they know that if they speak the truth and tell on this individual and, and go against the grain, they know that they will focus their attention on them. These narcissists will focus the attention on the person that does not comply. Remember in a family setting where you have uh, different individuals that play a role in that family, you know, you have the, the narcissist, you have the codependent, you have the quiet child, you know, the hidden child, you have the lost child, you have the, you know, the jester, you have the, 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 um, you have the scapegoat, you have the golden child. Well, it works the same way within an office setting when you have a narcissist. Every person plays certain roles. And if you fall out of that role, they will take the people just like they do in the family. They'll take the people and turn the people against you because they gaslight, 
because of the fact they're grooming them in the very beginning. They, they get them to follow them. And so if you are not in compliance, meaning if you don't support or sustain this narcissist, if you become the scapegoat, you know, if you're the one that I'm just going to say it like it is, all the attention, the focus is on you. They will go to the extent of getting you fired out of your job. It's not that they're the problem anymore. You've become the problem because you have spoken up. You have said something. So now you are the problem. So we have to get rid of the problem out of this job, out of this section. So they once again will start a narrative. They're the type of people that will call different, you know, the different uh, uh, people within their group, the different employees, the supervisors. And what they do is they plant seeds. They're real sneaky. They plant seeds. They, they plant these little seeds of discord. They plant these little seeds of division. And then they'll ask, what they'll do also is that, you know, they're having conversations and they'll say, well, you know, that's not what I heard. Well, you know, I'm not one to gossip, you know, uh, but that's not what I heard. That's not, you know, the information. And they'll wait for the other person who's normally a person that may be a little uh, paranoid about or, or their self-esteem is a little low. And they will ask questions like, so is so-and-so talking about me? Well, you know, I'm not one to say anything. I'm just let you go with what you're thinking. You know, go with your thinking. They remember narcissists play on your narrative, whether it's positive or negative, but narcissists play on your narrative. So they plant those little seeds of doubt. And then you begin to ask questions and you're the one that comes up with the best narrative. You come up with the best story. And all that narcissist does is play into your story. And then guess who makes the complaint? Then you make a complaint about something that has absolutely nothing to do with you, but has everything to do with that narcissist because the narcissist is about revenge then the competitive ones those narcissists that come into a department and they have already pinpointed the job that they want the position that they want so their whole focus now is to uproot and overthrow that person in that position so they do those exact same things they get people to follow them they plant these seeds of discord and remember they have patience not only do they have patience the fact is they're messy you know when that mask falls you'll see a lot of things number one they have a low self-esteem anyway but on top of that they want that position because they want that position of power but any narcissist that gets into a position of power normally abuses their position of power and once again that's just a bigger stage for them to operate on where they pull more people toward them to them so you have these supervisors that are creating or these managers or these peers or these co-workers that are creating these narratives but you notice that all of a sudden the co-workers are going to this one individual they don't even go to the supervisor anymore and then all of a sudden the supervisor the management the team lead or whatever does not have the influence that they had at one time they're trying to lead the team to do something they're going by what their supervisor has told them you know or their management has told them that this is the objective and the goals for the team and you know but then it's that one person that always tends to plant those little seeds and they may not say anything because they're hidden remember they're hidden they planted seeds and then you know they'll encourage people like go ahead say something you know don't, don't be afraid say something remember you can file this complaint so they operate they have these flying monkeys and they operate vicariously through the flying monkeys and their whole position is to overthrow your position to get your position and to get into your seat and all it is is power and control all they want is the title and all they want is power and control to continue the manipulation then you'll also notice those that are in positions of power where they take all the credit for the team it's not even a team effort anymore they get remember a narcissist wants to be worshipped a narcissist wants to be the god in your life like a pharaoh they want to be the god they erect themselves up and create these altars for you to worship them whatever way possible and they'll do whatever they can make your life miserable or make the team like you because they have that much influence and some people are like that'll never happen it's happened to a lot of us it has happened to a lot of us and then you know when a person actually speaks up they make the person look like they're crazy they you know remember that um you know when 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 they you know prod the bear prod the bear and then the bear bites back or when that person finally blows up and says something guess what they do oh my gosh you see what i'm talking about you see this is unnecessary that was unnecessary all the focus is off of them and now the focus is on the person that was protecting themselves the person that finally blew up but these are the narcissists that maneuver through and then after the narcissist leaves they've left all these seeds of discord and they have a whole team all this damage and pilferage i think that's what's called 
left behind that management now has to clean up. All because of that narcissist and no one confronted.